that heat exchangers are really pretty simple devices. It doesn't exactly take the skill of a surgeon to operate on a heat exchanger. And the tools you need to work on a heat exchanger aren't as varied and complex as those you'd find in the operating room either. Nevertheless, it's important to give thought and care to any job you do. The things you do to prepare for the job call for thought about what you'll be doing. And the precautions necessary to ensure doing the job safely deserve consideration too. Now, when we prepare for any maintenance job, we've got to select the tools necessary to do the job. These tools include safety items as well as stuff for mechanical work. Part of our preparations also include procedures we have to follow to ready the equipment to be worked on. These practices include shutting down the system and tagging equipment so it won't be operated while you're doing work. Now, when a work order comes down for a maintenance job, the first thing to do is check out the equipment you'll be working on. You should also look at any manufacturer's manuals or spec sheets on the equipment. This way you can figure out exactly what you'll need to do the job. If you know what you'll be working on, and if you know what the task is, then you can decide what tools and equipment you need. Let's see what this takes. Mel here just got a work order to open and inspect the water boxes of the main condenser on turbine unit number 12. Now, maintenance practices vary from place to place. In Mel's plant, the operations people are responsible for shutting down the associated systems and draining the condenser. In some plants, Mel might do this part of the preparation himself. Equipment tags are placed on all valves and controls to be sure they're not operated. This will prevent unpleasant surprises while the job's going on. While he's at it, Mel checks the size of the hardware so he'll have the right sized wrenches to open the condenser up. Back at the tool room, it's just a matter of checking out the right tools and equipment and making sure that nothing's overlooked. And while we're at it, how about looking over the equipment to make sure it's okay? A visual inspection of tools and equipment can save a trip back to the tool room, or possibly might save a trip to the doctor. Let's take a look at the equipment needs for this job. Since Mel or his co-worker will be working in a wet, confined area, he chooses special low-voltage safety lighting to protect against a shock hazard. They'll need an impact wrench and a large socket to loosen the retaining nuts on the water box doors. And it would be a good idea to take a crowbar along just in case the swivel studs are really tight. A rain suit and boots will help keep them dry inside the water box, especially if they have to do any cleaning of the water box or the tubes. Now, if any chemical corrosion inhibitors were used in this system, very special precautions would be needed to protect the eyes and the skin. Many of these are chromate solutions, and they're especially hazardous if you have no protection. Sometimes breathing protection is even needed where these chemicals are used. They'll need an air quality check. A sniff tester, like this one, not only tells if there's enough oxygen to breathe inside the confined workspace, but also signals if there are any explosive gases present. In Mel's plant, the instrumentation people are responsible for doing this check. But in a lot of places, Mel would do it for himself. Now, since the cooling water in this plant's condensers comes in from the river nearby, there's likely to be a lot of muck inside. So in order to do a thorough and complete inspection in the condenser, Mel's helper is going to need to clean accumulated junk out of the water box and off the face of the tube sheets first. For this, he'll need picks and scrapers, and a rake will make it easier to get the big stuff a shovel, and a container to pass the crud out to be dumped, round out what they'll need for this part of the job. Because they're sure of having to clean out the tubes, they'll be certain to check out a high-pressure water gun and maybe a bunch of scrapers, brushes, or squeegees to shoot the tubes with. This will come later in this job. And now it's down to the job. When our worker was looking over the unit earlier, he made sure the water boxes were drained and that equipment had been tagged out, so he knows it's safe to open up the condenser. It's been a while since this unit's been opened up, so the impact wrench will make it a lot easier to open it than if they had to use hand tools. The large nuts are backed off only enough to allow the studs to be swiveled out of the way. With the last one loose, the door comes open easily. 
After opening two doors on each side of the water box, the very first thing to do is an air quality check. This is necessary before you go to work in any kind of confined area. The sniff tester is calibrated for both readings it'll take. After calibrating the meter, a sample of the atmosphere in the water box is drawn into the tester through the nozzle at the end of the hose. The meter shows how much oxygen content is in the air and any percentage of explosive gases. If either reading falls outside the safe limits, an alarm goes off and the meter will tell you exactly what's wrong. In this case, there's plenty of oxygen inside and no gases are present to cause danger. If there were, the water box would have to be ventilated or if it were impossible to ventilate, anyone working inside would have to use a respirator. Even though the air inside the water box is safe, this crew has decided to provide ventilation using this large fan. The fresh plant air will make it more pleasant to work inside the water box. Now this unit's been shut down for a couple of days, so it's cool enough to work in without danger of fatigue or heat exhaustion. If it were still hot, they might have to take special precautions such as extra ventilation for cooling or even reduce the work cycle to prevent heat exhaustion from working in a hot environment. Of course, our mechanics are observing the two-man rule, too. This is a very basic safety rule for any kind of work in a confined space. There's always one man on the outside, not only to serve as a helper, but to ensure the safety of the worker inside. The man can call for help and provide assistance if the worker inside gets into any trouble. All these preparations and precautions we've talked about in this part of the program make the job easier and safer. Easier because the thoughtful planning that goes into getting ready for the job keeps the number of steps involved down to a minimum. And safer because the care that's taken to observe precautions in doing the job ensure that the worker doesn't have to deal with unnecessary dangers on the job. In this part, we've looked at preparations such as draining the condenser and shutting off valves and pumps in the system, choosing tools and equipment for the job, and opening up the unit. We've also talked about safety precautions like tagging out equipment, special safety lighting, air testing, and the two-man rule for working in a confined space. And we've seen all these preparations and precautions followed properly up to the point where the condenser is open and they're ready for work to begin. Now all these procedures also apply to work on large shell and tube heat exchangers. In some cases, the headers will be opened up so the problem of a confined workspace doesn't exist, but gases can still be present as the head is coming off. We'll be looking inside a large shell and tube heat exchanger further on as we follow Mel's job, too. Before we go on to the actual work to be done, pause now to read through Chapter 2 in your text and answer the questions. Your instructor will discuss any special procedures that are followed in your plant and can answer any questions you may have. When we get back, we'll follow our workers through their job cleaning and inspecting the condenser, and we'll also take a look at some of the same kinds of operations on large shell and tube heat exchangers.